Oh my gosh, they didn't get none of that. We can start over. That's no problem. I have no oh. problem with that. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Hello. Are you there? Um, let's see. I do apologize. Oh my god, the enemy is so crazy. Um, can everybody put something in the chat? Let me know that you're there. My system was not acting right. Are you there? Yeah, it's live now. So you should be able to see it. So oh. I'm so sorry. Okay, oh, guys. I'm gonna share uh, it right now while you're doing that. <laughs> Gosh, I did all of that. Not a problem. Okay. Not a problem. Again, just... welcome, welcome everybody to Kingdom Language Utterance Talk Show. Um, this is the host, MT, Minister Latour McPhee. I'm here with Pastor Kevin L.A. Ewing. I do apologize. Oh, great. You all can see it now. <laughs> oh, my God. Okay, so all this time, you guys, I'm so sorry. I was so excited. I forgot to hit the go live. I'm just going to tell them myself, right? So I forgot to hit the go live and y'all, Pastor Kevin, start going in. Mm -hmm. no, no in fact, while you're doing that, I'm just sharing it on my my, my social media sites. So, okay, uh, you see it now? Actually, yeah, I can see it perfectly oh, now. My okay. gosh. Okay, everyone is saying that they, they're excited. I guess they're all reading One River. So yes. <laughs> so you guys, I'm sorry. We're not going to do my usual intro today with the video and everything because I just want to jump right into the lesson because you all been waiting so patiently. And so I'm going to turn it over to Pastor Kevin so you guys um, have your pen, your paper, and your questions ready to go. And um, take it over, Pastor Kevin. <laughs> Beautiful. Thank you once again, uh, Minister McPhee. Again, I appreciate the invite. I thank God for your platform and me. You're giving me the opportunity to spread the unadulterated word of the living God. So, folks, tonight we are dealing with the big elephant in the room. And the topic tonight is being single. So, sorry, why am I still single? This is a very, very, very common question that I'm asked via emails, via when I'm doing my Zoom counseling and so on. Uh, we are in a time where people want to be connected. And for many reasons, they want to be connected. But for the most part, they want to share their lives uh, uh, with someone. So with that said, I want to start off by saying that being single is more spiritual uh, than physical. And what I mean by that is that folks who feel they have uh, what it takes to to be someone's husband or wife, why isn't it working for them? Why is it that the guy or the lady who live their lives like wild animals have to literally beat people off of them who's trying to marry them? And you who've been doing everything right all your life and living right and decent, it's like they're running away from you. So this is where the spiritual part of it comes in because it makes absolute, it will never make sense to you if you look at it from a physical perspective. Why is it that you're attracting the same kind of people, the same kind of losers, or people who just want to have sex, or people who just want to use you, or take your resources and use you, and once they're done, they just kick you to the curb. And sometimes you have to wonder, is there a sign that you're wearing that, hey, I'm free to use. If you want to take advantage of me, just come on over here. No, and all of what I'm saying is going to spell out to you the spiritual implications involved that is over your life, that is causing this consistency to happen. Because it's not happening by, uh, by accident. It's not happening by mistake. There are some components that were activated spiritually that literally have you mark a big X on you in the spiritual realm that is, a, that is causing these things to happen. In other words, you are no different than when God placed a mark on Cain. Nobody knew what this mark was. It was a spiritual mark, though, that no matter where he went on this earth, that curse followed him. It was levied upon his life. It was so bad, God told him that any man that attempt to or kill you, they themselves, I think, would be multiplied with sorrow, whatever the case may be. So being single, when I say that, in the sense that you reach the age to be married, but it just cannot happen. Oh, I'll take it a step further. You were married, and you thought you married a saint, only it turned out to be the devil with a pitchfork. <laughs> okay, so all of this, all of this we're going to make sense with tonight. Okay, so our first scripture I want us to go to is 
Genesis chapter 2, verse 18. And in Genesis chapter 2, verse 18, God is going to make it very clear in terms of what his thoughts were in terms of human relations. So we said in Genesis chapter 2, uh, verse 18, very sorry, I missed it. Here. Genesis chapter 2, verse 18, he says, And the Lord God said, It is not good, it is not beneficial, it is not profitable for a man to be alone. Now, let's be clear. He isn't saying that if you're not married as a sin, or if you don't get married, you're involved in some kind of your transgression. Mm -hmm. The key word to this particular passage of Scripture is the word good. And that word good means to benefit or to be of some use or profit to something or someone. God's intentions were for the opposite sex to come together but the idea, what he had in mind was for the couple, this union to produce more in life as a union than they were doing as individuals. Mm. So mm. when you're connected, and this is key, when you're connected to the right person and you're following the rules implemented by scripture to maintain this going forward with this right person, it, it is mandatory. It is by default that you will be producing more. Life will be better with being rightly connected with the right person. And I put, I'm putting emphasis on this because this is key. You can, well, I wouldn't say you cannot. You could, but it is not wise to say marry anybody. Particularly if you have the uh, traditional way of thinking that, I'm looking for a saved man, or I'm looking for a saved or a Christian woman. Well, my friend, you're begging for problems in that area. Like I would have told my followers, your prayer should never in this life be, Lord, I'm looking for a saved or Christian man, or Lord, I'm looking for a saved or Christian woman. Your prayer should be, Father, I am in search of the one that you have ordained, appointed for me before the foundation of the world. When you pray that way, that means you are open. You are totally open that whatever God sent my way, he didn't send it to hurt me. He didn't send it to make me miserable. He didn't send it for me to secure a divorce in the end. He didn't send it that we don't produce. I'm saying this because when we drop down to Genesis chapter, it's still in Genesis chapter 2 and verse 21, it says, And the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam, and he slept, and he took one of his ribs, and close up his flesh thereof. Now we skip this all the time, figuring we already know this part. Let's just go to the next verse. But let's put emphasis, how many ribs did he pull out of Adam to make Eve? One. Damn. This is key. Why? Because when we take that one rib and we go back to Genesis chapter 2, verse 18, where he says, not only is it beneficial for you to have someone, but a specific person. That's why he used the term help meet. And when you look up that word, it is that word, it is someone who's been specifically customized. Sorry, that's my audio Bible. Let me just turn this off. Someone who's been specifically customized by the all-knowing God, who knows the end from the beginning, who's hey. the Alpha and Omega. He know what this what he has called this person to be. He knows what he has called you to be. He knows that if this connection come together, listen. You're all about to take over. Mm. So this is just the beginning of why you're being fought as a single person. It is to keep you to not connect with the one that has called you to be. And worst case scenario, it is to connect you with someone you are not supposed to be with. I trying to help you tonight. I trying to help you tonight. So for y'all, for you guys who are not married as yet, take my word. Take my foolish, seemingly stupid advice. Pray and ask God, Father, I've been praying wrong. I am praying for your will, meaning that I'm not putting no limitations on whatever it is you bring my way. Because mm. I believe, according to Jeremiah uh, 11, I think, verse 29, where God says, I know the thoughts that I have towards you, they are good and not evil, and to give you an expected end. So, Lord, based on that scripture, I know your intentions for me are good. The intentions for me is is a, is you you aren't sitting on your throne, looking to see who you could connect me with to secure a divorce. 
looking mm. to see who you could connect me with who will beat the living lights out of me. You're not trying to bring someone to my life who's going to take all my money and use me and embarrass me and bring shame to my life. Because if your thoughts towards me are good and not evil, then I can trust you. So Lord, help me to take off the religious shackles that does laid, that that has caused me to be in this position to begin with, because I probably should have been married. But because of the religious jargons and the, the religious traditions and all of these standards that God never required, all he wanted you is to put your trust in him in this area. Mm. That's it. Put your trust in me. Don't focus on no wife. Don't focus on no husband. You keep moving in life, doing what is right, following my laws, following my rules, because by default, in you following my commandments, it's going to, by default, guide you to whom you're supposed to connect with. Mm. You ain't got to sow no seed to do it. You ain't got to spin around seven times. You ain't got to drop kick your neighbor and give them high five. None of that foolishness, garbage, <laughs> witchcraft, sorcery that they are currently practicing in these places engaging in sorcery to bring you a poison. So when yeah. Satan see you engaging in these demonic things, sowing seed for husband and wife, oh yeah, he got them lined right up for you. But I can assure you, it's going to be hell to pay in the end. So God says, I'm going to give you a specific person, one who you are going to be able to connect with, one who you will submit to and she submit to you and you all will go forward together. Now, why is this making sense? Because when we go over there to, I think it's Matthew 19, where Jesus said, listen carefully. He says, whom God put together. I like that. Yeah. Whom God has put together, let no man, no human tear asunder. So again, when we read in context that scripture, based on where we just came from in Genesis, whom he has put together. I have a specific person for you. So don't tell me you went over here so desperate and you married this guy who was flattering you and telling you how nice you are now. Under normal circumstances, you wouldn't have been attracted to him. But because he got some change, because he drive a nice car, because he got a good job, boom, in your mind, this is God's will for my life. Why, and why are you doing that? Because they could take care of me. They can help me. But nowhere in there in your selfish mind. So this right here tell me you shouldn't be connecting with somebody because your motives are selfish. In your selfish mind, you're looking for someone who could take care of you, someone who could help you. Nowhere in that equation are you saying, I want to find someone who I could work with, who we could be a team and move forward and achieve together. So what happens now when things break down on the back end with homeboy, he loses his job and he ain't got his car no more. But well, he got to go. Oh, yeah. So be because the, the premises of that relationship was based on the ability of them taking care of you. Now that they cannot do that anymore, they have already served their purpose. Now I realize this was in God's choice. The devil come in my life. This was Satan. Yeah, you knew he was Satan. <laughs> but, see, but again, if we, if we would stop playing games with ourselves, mm -hmm. primarily stop being selfish, because that's what it is. You are selfish when you only could see what a person could do for you, not what you could bring, but not mm -hmm. how you guys can work together in harmony or in synergy. Nobody is interested in that. You must come fully made, and I'm just supposed to enjoy or live off of what you would have worked so hard for, or discipline yourself for, and that's how I'm supposed to live. So this is why you find so many people Still in the scene, now, this ain't for everybody. This, this is one category. Why you find that single stage for so long? And primarily because of the mindset, particularly from a religious perspective. Because I'm telling you, they are programmed. It's almost like it's drilled into their brain that they have to be a Christian. And how many, how many scandals do we see with Christians today and pastors and apostles, sex scandals and multiple? So I cannot go by that standard. So what standard do I go by, Kevin? I go by the standard that I know God has already put everything in place for me. So my prayer should be, Father, I don't know who she is. I don't know who he is. But I pray that through your spirit, you direct me. The spirit of truth, the Holy Spirit will direct me into all truth. Primarily the person that you have ordained for me to connect with. Mm -hmm. See, that's when the glory of God is going to come forward. When you connect with the right people, the right places and the right things. 
life, life, life don't become perfect, but it come, becomes much easier. Yeah. So with that said, I want us to look at three things what causes a person to be challenged with singlehood, meaning that they have passed the age of they should have been married. But for whatever reason, and I'm sure many people could, could, could relate to what I'm about to say, whatever reason, it's almost, it's, it's almost you at the point where you just want to give up and give up in a horrible sense that, you know what, let me just marry somebody because I don't want to grow old and be alone and nobody to help me. And that's the worst decision you could ever make in this life because that means you're willing to settle for anybody who just crawl out from under a rock somewhere. <laughs> and that's going to spend <laughs> smell trouble, trouble in the end. Going back to singleness being prime, I mean, basically spiritual. A lot of people, Minister McPhee, their life in terms of being married was cursed before mm. they were even born. Mm. Wow. Go deep now. Let me pull up my wow. here. I'm going to do some serious surgery right now, okay? A lot of people, let me tell you something, yeah? There's a saying that I remember growing up, and I remember my grandmother. She used to say stuff like, boy, don't cause me put mud on you. <laughs> now, what mud on you really meant is really from a biblical principle, you know, mud on you yeah. simply means there's death and life in the power of the tongue. So a lot of times when your Grammy had issues with your mother who got pregnant out of wedlock, mm. there's some things that she said when she was angry, not realizing that she's speaking to the destiny of this lady. She, she is shutting down her spiritual ability to connect. Yes, she mm. made a mistake, but you don't compound the mistake by speaking evil over her life. So she would right. say stuff, you don't mess up your life. No mm. good man will never marry you. You, you, mm. you mess straight up. You will be like a, like a, you'll be raining down the bastards and having, she's literally forging and carving and creating her future. She's pulling her off of the destiny that God mm. originally intended for her. And she's putting her on a curse one. How? Through the words of her mouth. Wow. Mm -hmm. Wow. So let's look at some scripture to support this. See, I like to talk sense. Mm. Let's look at scriptures to support what I'm saying, okay? So let's go to James chapter 3. Let's go to James. Many beautiful women. I know many, even not so beautiful, but intelligent. And, and if you sit with them one-on-one, -on -one, trust me, they are nothing like how they appear to be. And they want the same thing like everybody else. They want someone to love them, someone to appreciate them. But all their lives, they were whipped, not with a stick. They were shot, not with a gun, but with the tongue of somebody who literally just levied lashes on them. And not knowing that these lashes was literally diverting them from the God-intended destiny that he had in place for them. So James chapter 3, and we're going to read from verse 8 to verse 10, right? James chapter 3, we're going to read from verse 8 to verse 10. Listen to what it says. James chapter 3, verse 8 says, But the tongue can no man tame or govern mm -hmm. or rule. Listen, listen what he's saying about the tongue now. It is an unruly evil. Let that just marinate for about five minutes. It is an unruly evil. Listen, listen. Full of deadly poison. Sandra, I can't believe you. You you bring shame to this family. You bring in a bastard in this world. No man will ever want you. You will never get... See, they have no idea. My God. Listen, spiritually... If God could open their eyes, it's like you putting a chain around that child and taking these big spikes and jicking it in the ground and bolting it there. Well, now, while this child may be moving physically, spiritually, they are bound. Spiritually, they are limited. Spiritually, they cannot go forward. This is why they can't figure out why is it. I know many other people who are children or the wedlock and got married to a decent man and life moved on and he accepted and adopted the child. How is it that this can't happen for me? Because those ones who achieve it, their mothers and daddies and uncles and grammys never spoke garbage over their lives. I'm trying to help you. Mm. I'm trying to help you. 
never spoke life and death. Christians say it all the time, but they're hypocrites. Not all of them. They say one thing and do the next. You say and there's life and death in the tongue, but yet you still levy and curses. Yet you mm. let your emotions come in there and literally tying up that child life, putting it in a knot. Child will go around in circles all their lives because they can't figure out how many of them on the edge of suicide? How many of them feel like giving up because they cannot understand what is it? I I am kind. I am loving. I am. I I want to do for somebody else. I want to be a part of a family. What is? I see nothing blocking me. What is it blocking me? Spiritual implications that were spoken over yeah. your life. My Got God, you right Got you nailed right down. Can't go nowhere. So James chapter three verse eight says, "But the tongue can no man tame." It is an unruly evil, full of deadly poison. Verse 9 of James 3. Therewith bless we God, even the Father, and therewith curse we men. So we say in one minute you're praising and honoring God with the same tongue. Then the same tongue, Christian, you're cursing people. So when you see the word curse, I want you to think in this term. Curse literally means limitation. To mm -hmm. limit someone from moving or progressing freely in an area they were designed to reign, to rule, to dominate. So once I speak this evil over your life, I am literally speaking spiritual curses that will limit you in life. Wow. Wow. So check this out. You're the Christian and you come from Christian parents, but they more gung-ho over their title and name and image they're cursing yeah. you. Look what you did to this family. How you think we can look before the church and other people, blah, blah, blah. Now, guess what? The neighbor crossed the door. Her daughter got pregnant too. And guess what? They're not Christians, but guess what? They're there to aid a baby. You're going to be all right. Mommy and daddy here for you. And speaking life over them. So you wonder how is it that this girl come from a family who don't know God, don't want nothing to do with God, but she can find the right man who can take care of her and this child and they're going to excel in life. Wow. But the Christian people over here, they're happening for death and life is in the power of the tongue. See, you see, I don't care how saved you are. I don't care what you call yourself. If the rules are for everybody and the rules will work for you, depending on how you work the rules. You can call yourself the right, honorable, Episcopal, whatever garbage. If you home going against the laws of God, you don't got to tell me, it can show in public. When Ooh. I see limitation, when I see stagnation, when I see you can't go forward in life, Christian, why? Oh, the devil busy. You're right. Because you had him waking with you all along when you was talking trash over your children, talking trash over the seed and your future generation. Mm. My talking God. Nonsense, a bunch of garbage. I just tired of them. I'm tired of the hip hypocrisy, quoting all the scriptures and never applying none, never applying or, 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 or ap uh, uh, make an application for any of them. We too quick to judge and to run over garbage all day. Take a look at you. Don't yeah. come but how, what, where these children and what kind of generation? The Bible say every seed produces after its kind. So Ooh. whatever you calling them mommy, whatever you calling them daddy, that's who you are. Mm. They are a product of you. Talking mess. Mm, uh, anyway, let me come. So let's go back. <laughs> Jesus. So he says in James chapter 3, beginning at verse 8 again, but the tongue can no man tame. It is an unruly evil full of deadly poison. Therewith you use it to bless God, and therewith you use it to curse men, which are made, listen, after the similitude of God. So he's saying these men or these women or your children, whoever you're cursing, remember, they are made in the image of God. Uh, verse 10 says, out of the same mouth proceeded blessings, meaning to empower people, and curses, my brethren, these things ought not to be. So here is the, the irony of this. And that's why people believe that because they are Christians, and I don't know when they can wake up from this, that the Bible is just full of exemptions for them. Now, we just read just now, and it says that out of your mouth comes blessings and out of your mouth comes curses. You did not read only out of the Christian mouth blessings could come out and people would be blessed. And only out of the sinner mouth only curses could come and people be cursed. So the Bible is saying built into every human being, whether they're a Buddhist, whether they're a Satanist, whether they're a Christian, no matter who they are, 
Whenever they begin to speak, they still hold the power and the authority to bless or curse. Again, this explains why this family over here, none of them are saved. None of them serve God. But when it comes to motivation and positive speaking and encouraging and supporting one another, oh, they got that together. And the evidence of it, look at their lives. All of them married, got good husband. Yeah, some of them mess up, actually, know the red lock, but they find men or women who accepted that child and they connected and moved forward together. The mommy who wasn't saved said, baby, guess what? A good man, you can find one day, you can take care of you and you're going to work together. Don't mind this, baby. This is just a, a, a little bump in the road. Don't look at this. You can get through this. See, this is how you talk, not the Christian. The Christian quick to condemn. The Christian to, quick to tear you down. Quick to rip you apart. Quick to levy curses on you. I know they don't like it. They don't like me. That's their problem because they too no good. And not all. <laughs> let me be clear. Not all. Those, the ones who are no good. So we got to be careful of the things that we say because a lot of people right now as I speak to you, going into their 40s, 50s, some 60s, cannot get married because years ago, Grammy, daddy, mommy told them, you will never, what you do here, you will never get married. No good man will never take you on with no bastard child. Never knowing the devil is right there just waiting, rubbing his hand. Because the Bible said the curse cause this cannot come. It need a cause. It needs something to work with. Well, mommy and daddy and grandma them provided it. All that devil wanted them to do was speak the word. Once they speak that word, they take the action from there spiritually. So what happened now? Those spirits will accompany that child life and to ensure that they never connect with the right person. Ensure that they always hook up to exactly what mommy say, to exactly what daddy said. And that's why for me, I'm so shocked when you see these young men going to court for murder and stealing and all these vicious crime, and the mummy them around the court crying, oh, Jesus, oh, Lord, Jesus, have mercy. You don't have no mercy. When you was telling the boy all his life, he can be a thief and he can end up in jail. He can get yeah. gunned down. What you, now it's manifesting. I don't understand it. How come all of a sudden death and life and the power of the tongue don't work for you all no more in, in your little mind? Everything you spoke over these children is coming to pass here in 2023, 2021, 22, all the years past. You watch your words manifested. But when mm. you had no control over your tongue, no control over your anger, no control over your bitterness, you begin to violate their destiny through the poison venom of your tongue. Mm. That's why they say single. I'm trying to help you. So Proverbs chapter 18. Let's go to Proverbs chapter 18. Proverbs chapter 18. And we're going to look at verse 21. Proverbs 18, 21. <clears throat> Proverbs 18 says, death. See how it started? It didn't start with life. Uh. It started with the one that would be commonly spoken, death. Death and life are in the power, the power of the tongue. And they that love it, oh, I love it. You know what it's telling me? God wasn't biased here. He didn't say, I'm only going to put death and life in the power of the tongue of the Christian or the power of the tongue of the believer. No, every human being have that authority and have that power with their words. How you use it is up to you. And how you use it, will the results of it will be revealed in the future. That's why I would never in this life, and I never did, and never, ever, ever, ever speak negative garbage over my children. I don't care right. what they do. Sit them down and talk to them and chastise them in terms of what they need to do to do the right things in life and make them aware of these rules. Daddy ain't just saying this to you. I want you, this is the reason why I'm doing this, because I want you to have a better future. I know the magnitude of words being spoken over you that God never, ever spoke over you. But at the same time, he gave everyone the authority in their mouths to speak. Unfortunately, mm. people ignorantly, not knowing the rules, speaking, I mean, just viciously over people's lives and watching these people's lives because the people don't know who, 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 who these words are over. They don't know they could break it. They, they don't know that they could reject it. They don't know none of that. So they sit right there and call up, coil up because that's mommy, that's daddy. You know, you don't say nothing when they curse it and row you. You just stay there and take the verbal licking. But that verbal licking, which is bringing emotional pain, I wish that was the only side effect of it. My friend, ladies and gentlemen, 
up the road. You understand me? The forces that will now respond to those negative words are now beginning to forge your destiny. Trouble and damnation based on those words are in the future waiting on your arrival. So the Bible says, as in Proverbs 18, verse 21, death and life are in the power of the tongue. And I and it says, and they that love it, they that love it shall eat the fruit. So it tells me my words are going to produce fruit one day. And the Bible is now giving me detail of what is happening in the spiritual realm. He says, if, for example, when someone cursing you, they're cursing with that passion, you will never ever in this life. For you doing that to me, you will never prosper. I take my oath to God. You will. When you hear these things, well, you better start rebuking. You better wow. say, God, I reject every evil, venomous, poisonous word. This poison is speaking over my life. Father, right now I outfit myself with the whole arm of God just to shield me from this vicious, vicious tongue, this wild, loose tongue of this poison. Because if you don't do it, my friend, silence give consent. By default, you agree with this. So you got to shut it down. The second thing as to why most people are still single, and I think it's one of the most common ones, sexual immorality. Mm. Nothing could pollute your future outside of someone speaking evil of you than when you engage in sexual, illegal sexual intercourse. All of us, most of us uh, now, and at my age, and probably some in their 40s and 30s and 20s, you know, the world view is, hey, look, go to have sex, you know, test the merchandise before you purchase it or marry it, all this foolishness. Listen to me. All of that is defiling you as a human being. And when I say defiling you, the word defile in the Bible means to corrupt or to make impure something that was once pure. For example, if you have a glass of white milk and you put some Hershey's chocolate liquid in it, well, it ain't going to be white no more, right? It's now it's going to be corrupt or defiled. So the Bible, especially in the New Testament, the Apostle Paul speak to the church of Thessalonia, Corinth, Galatian, mm -hmm. you yeah. name it. Every time he went to them, he always say, refrain from youthful lust or refrain from uh, sexual immorality. Now I'm about to show you why, because there's a great implication every time you have sex with someone. And I'm going to be totally upfront. I, I I wish someone had told me these things before I ever started having sex. If I was armed with this information, mm -hmm. I am sure I would have made better choices because I would have been guided by the end result that they would have brought. While the temptation would have been like, yeah, go get your groove on and, and you can be the star and everybody know. But if I, if I could have negotiated my way out of such temptation, Mm -hmm. If I was armed with the implication of once, once I engage in the act, what it's going to pan out later. Had I known the spiritual implication, mm -hmm. which is going to pollute my mindset now in making wrong decisions going forward. So let's look at some scriptures, right? Let's look at uh, Proverbs uh, chapter 6. Proverbs chapter 6, and we're going to look at verse 32. Proverbs chapter 6. And verse 32. Listen what it says here. It says, Whoso committed adultery with a woman, lack it understanding. I want you to highlight that. Whoever yeah. committed adultery with a woman, the Bible says this poison lack understanding. Okay. They lack understanding. And it says, He that doeth it, do it what? The adultery. Mm -hmm. Destroy it his soul. So highlight destroy it his soul. Okay. So there's a lot of stuff to unpack here, but I want to make something very clear. Now, during this time, prior to the Old Testament, because you know we're in the, sorry, prior to the New Testament, because this is an Old Testament principle, adultery back then was very, very, the understanding was very simple. If you are married, any sexual activity, be it with animals, another party or whatever, outside of your marriage, meaning outside of your marital union, is considered adultery. So if you're married and you have sex with a guy who you're not married to, that's adultery. If you have sex with a woman, that's adultery. If you had sex with an animal, it's adultery. Likewise for the man. Now, this here has been amended. But before we go to the amendment, let's make sense of what we have here right now. So the scripture is telling us here in Proverbs chapter 6, verse 32, it says, but whoso, whoso mean 
whoever, anybody, no one is exempted from this rule. Whoever committed adultery with a woman, the Bible said this person lack understanding. So, okay, why would the Bible tell me that? Because for it to make that statement that I lack understanding, it's implying that there are some things that I'm not aware of that by engaging in this act, it's going to work against me later. So if you if someone say to you, okay, you say, all right, uh, let us go rob a bank. I know a way that we could do it and nobody would know. You work in the bank, you could pull some numbers and blah, blah, blah. And the other person will be like, I think you lack understanding. I ain't going to do that. So what they're saying is that, yes, it sounds easy to you. But if you know the ins and outs of what you're getting engaged in and the consequences it will bring, you will never touch it. So God is saying anyone that committed adultery with a woman, lack of understanding, but this is the part that got me. He that doeth this, destroy it his own soul. So of course we're now going to focus in on the soul. What is it that he's really destroying? And we know the soul to be the mind, the will, the intellect, the emotional base of someone. In fact, it is the uh, it is the administrator of the your triune being, spirit, mind, and soul. So mm -hmm. this is where you make decisions. This is where you 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 charter the way going forward and so on. So the Bible is saying. By engaging in this sexual act, you could now pollute your way of thinking going forward. So by having sex when you're not supposed to, the person who's in place for you and the things that God have lined up for you, this is now going to become blurred to you because you've engaged in something that has defiled you. Let me explain this for you though. Let's think about a young man who just graduated from high school and go deep on this one. He just graduated from high school. I mean, destined for greatness, brilliant, graduated 4.0. I mean, get all kinds of scholarships, the works, right? So he met this lady who was like six years, seven years, his senior, right? Mm -hmm. And she liked him and so on and so forth. So everything fine. So guess what? They end up having sex together. Mm -hmm. Now, all of a sudden, now that sex has been placed into the equation, this dude ain't thinking with a straight head no more. Mm. All of this, this was the Bible talk about you destroying your soul. All of his mind now, all of his decision now, the basis of that decision is on pleasure, sex, being with an older person. He ain't thinking straight no more. Now, he don't even go to college no more because he don't want to leave his, the sweetie he got here. All mm. of his ass, all of this, everything is being destroyed, all because he engaged in something that the Bible prophesied that if you mess around with this, you're destroying your soul. Now, there are those who watch and say, Well, Kevin, well, he ain't committed adultery if the woman ain't married and he ain't married, right? And that's why I said I preempt this particular part of it by saying that I'm gonna now go to show you where the amendment was made as it relates to adultery, because we just said here, adultery is the violation of, if, of the sexual commitment in the marriage, meaning you're having sex with other people. So now let's go here to Matthew chapter five, because we can bring this baby home. Matthew chapter five, and we're gonna look at verse 27 and verse 28. Matthew five, verse 27 and verse 28. So right. we're gonna see now where the amendment is going to now encompass this young man as committing adultery, even though he isn't married mm -hmm. and this lady isn't married. But the reason why we're saying this is because based on Proverbs chapter six, it says that he that committed adultery destroyed his own soul. So I don't want people to isolate adultery as people just being married and having sex outside of the marriage. So what would Jesus say in the amendment of the adultery act? So in Mark chapter five, verses 27, Jesus says, you have heard that it was said by them of old time, meaning the Old Testament, thou shalt not commit adultery. All right? And of course, the understanding was what I explained earlier. Jesus says in verse 28 of Matthew 5, But I say unto you, I say unto you, that whosoever looketh on a woman to lust after her had committed adultery with her already in his heart. So let's come, let's bring the boy back to the equation now based on these new rules. No, he isn't married to her, and she isn't married to him, and they're married to nobody. But the mere fact that they're fornicating or having sexual relations outside of marriage, according to what we just read, they're committing adultery. 
whether he sit back and fantasize and masturbate or whether he's actually engaging in the act. Anything to do with them not being married, that's all encompassing adultery. This is key to note because there's a rule for adultery that we read earlier in Proverbs 6 and 32. It says, he that committed adultery is void of understanding. He doesn't realize the spiritual implication of what he is doing. In fact, it now begins to go straight to the end of what will become of him. It says that he is now destroyed, or he will destroy his soul, his ability to reason, his ability to make the right decisions. What sex is going to do for him now is that he's going to base his decisions on the pleasure, on her looks. He's now, because all of these spirits, he's taking on the spirit of jealousy. He don't want nobody else with her. He don't want to go to school because he figures somebody else can sleep with her. You never used to think this garbage before? Yeah. So you see where the soul of this person is now polluted as a result of this sexual violation. Look how it's now nailing him in the ground and causing him not to encounter the things that God had put in place for him, such as an education, such as opportunities, such as the one he's supposed to be with, all because he is violating the sexual laws. Mm. Very clear. So the Bible is clear here, sexual laws. Now let's look, go to First Thessalonians. Let's go to First Thessalonians chapter 4. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, and yes, no. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, and we're going to read from verse 3 to 5. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, and we're going to read from verse 3 to verse 5. Listen, listen to this. Verse 3 of 1 Thessalonians 4 says, For this is the will of God, even your, listen to this, your sanctification, or your pureness or purity or the cleansing of you to make you free of the sinful debris to give the enemy the right to infiltrate your life to stagnate you in the area of singleness or whatever else he says for this is the will of god this is what god desire even your sanctification that ye should abstain from fornication okay watch this verse 4 of first thessalonians 4 that Every one of you should know how to possess his vessel in sanctification and honor, meaning that you should be able to discipline yourself or have sexual control over your body and not sleeping with everybody. Now, it isn't like God is trying to keep you away from pleasure. The truth is he's helping you because if you violate the spiritual law sexually, there's a major price to pay up the road. Mm. So what's verse, verse four again? that every one of you should know how to possess his vessel in sanctification and honor, not in the lusts, sorry, not in the lusts of con, concup, that word, concupiscence or whatever. But anyway, listen to what that word means. That word con, concupiscence, concupiscence, the meaning of that is strong sexual desires. Uh, so he says wow. in verse 5, before he says 4, not in the lust of strong sexual desires, even as the Gentiles which know not God. So again, he's putting emphasis in so much words that when you engage in illegal sexual activity, meaning inside of marriage, you're not married to this person, there is a force that's going to invade your life, a spirit, okay, that is a part of destroying your destiny. But the spirit job is to mess with this. The minute you start having sex, watch how things change. Watch what you're going to call love now. You're going to call sex love, passion love, lust love. You're not in love with this person. You're in love with the, with the pleasure. That's it. But you, the spirit has convinced you. So here it is. Why this is important? Because here it is. You're camping out and stagnant with a person who is not the person God called for you. Mm. Jeez. So the enemy is eating up your time, eating up your resources. All of the, You should have been on your way to getting your education and God would have continued to lead you till it's time for you to be connected with the person whom you're supposed to produce more with. But that cannot happen because the enemy sent in his number one successful weapon. What is that? Sexual immorality. Sexual immorality. Mm. And guess what? To make sure you stay there, he can make sure you go full-fledged with them. Orally, mm. every orally, everything you're going to do. All of this is putting that rope tighter and tighter and tighter and tighter. 
That wow. even when you won't leave, you can't leave. Even when they cheat on you and talk to you bad and beat you up and take your money, some way, somehow, you're crawling right back. Some way, somehow, you're still thinking you could make it work when you know this makes absolutely no sense. But there's a spirit over your life as a result of the sexual violation that's pegging you in the ground. You ain't going nowhere. So guess what? 15, 20 years later, five children later, this dude wouldn't marry you for nothing in the world. Mm. You got to settle now. Mm. You watch 35 years just eating away. Just the devil just had a field day with your life. All because you activated laws that you did, weren't aware of that is now working against your destiny. And that's why I say to parents, stop being silly. Stop cursing your children. Stop telling them junk. Cover them. Please take that tongue where you have authority, whether you're a Christian or not, and speak life. My yeah. children will not have children or a wedlock. And even the ones who have it, that's where it ends right there. They will find someone who will help them and their child and go forward. They will work yeah. together as a team. I speak, mm -hmm. decree, and declare over my children's life that the enemy will not steal their destiny. The enemy will not manipulate them. He mm. could afford to come and kill, steal, and destroy, but it wouldn't be my children. Yeah. I prophesy life. They should be the head and not the tail, above only and not beneath. They will be successful. Them and their partners, they will work together. And mm. what was one shame in terms of these outside children? These children will become great. They will never make the mistake mommy and daddy made. That's how you speak. That's what you declare, decree and declare. You don't speak garbage and nonsense mm. because your mother cuts you out. You see what your life became, and you're taking that same baton and beating your children with it. The devil is a liar. Jesus. The devil is a liar. Mm. He's a liar. So young people, you have to refrain. I don't. I know what the world is putting out there. I know what they're saying. I know having sex, fornication, and adulteries and stuff is common stuff today. But trust me, that is the road to disaster. And many online right now, could, could witness to what I said and said, listen to this young man. I was one of those people who didn't listen, who, who rebelled against the people that were giving me advice, good advice, and thought I knew it all. 10, 20, 30 years later, mm. I don't own my own home. I don't have my career. Mind you, all of the opportunities were there in the past. I am mm. now with four children, with four baby daddies. None of them take care of these children. I got to take them to court. I got to scrap up money to send my children to school, to feed them. All of this could have been diverted if uh, someone was telling you what I'm telling you right now. To try to help you. So the third reason why you're still single, and this one here is one that is normally, uh, people don't want to speak about it, but it's more real than real could be. And that is singleness for you, when you should have been married already, has now become a product of witchcraft or demonic evil in the family bloodline. I try to help mm. you. I trying to help you. Now, wow. let me let me let me take my time because this one will take me. Ooh. I got to go a little deep on this to bring clarity. A lot of people listening to me right now. I tell you, boy. When that Bible says that we perish because we lack knowledge, believe that Bible, yeah? It is what your people didn't know. And their wallowing in the ignorance of what they were doing was literally shackling your life, shackling your destiny. So watch this. The child isn't born, right? Mm -hmm. But it was told the mother that somebody is trying to Put a curse on your child. Whether the husband is having an affair and his sweetheart or side piece is trying to do this, it doesn't matter. So the mother's now being advised to go to this witchcraft doctor, this Saint Goma, and do a spiritual bath or go put something in the water or do some kind of ritual. Mm. Now, what they don't know is that all of what they're being asked to do to protect them. They're literally surrendering themselves, in particular, the child, to that altar. So immediately, curses are invoked 
on the one who's doing it and the child that is in them and every other child that will come from them. Wow. Wow. Before I go any further, let me give some scriptures because I'm going to go in very much depth with this, but let me give some scriptures. So let's go to Exodus. Let's go to Exodus chapter 20. And we're going to read from verse 1 to verse 5, okay? Exodus chapter 20, verses 1 to verse 5. And it says, And God spoke these things, sorry, these words, saying, I, the Lord thy God, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Verse 3, Thou shalt have no other gods before me. There should be no other god other than the god of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Verse 4, Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven images or any likeness of anything that is in the heaven above or that is in the earth beneath. Mm -hmm. For that is in the water underneath the earth. Now, if we choose to violate everything that he just said, listen to verse 5. He says, Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, nor serve them. For I, the Lord, thy God, am a who? Jealous God. And what are you going to do, God, if we decide to go do the spiritual bath? If we decide to go get the charms or the amulets or put garlic on ourselves or engage in these things for luck, for spiritual protection? And if we decide to do this, Mm. What are the implication? What are the spiritual implication? Watch this. For thou, verse 5, thou shalt not bow thyself to them nor serve them. For I, the Lord, am a jealous God. And what are you going to do? I will visit the iniquity, the wickedness that you're doing over the, the iniquity of the fathers upon the children, that's the current ones, unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me. So what are you saying here? If I decide to go to the, the Sangomas, the witch doctors, the voodoo priests, the Santa of Rhea people, God is telling me, he's prophesying to you in advance. Kev, if you go and put your hand to these things, not only are you inviting curses to your life and your immediate kids, but the curse by default is secured all the way to the fourth generation. So what does that mean? Your grandchildren, your great-great-grandchildren who aren't born as yet, the curse is just waiting for whichever one of your future children push that child out, it is waiting to levy limitation, to levy them, never be able to get married, never to advance in life, to be limited in everything that they do. Holy. Scripture. Yeah. Scripture. So a lot of parents... They didn't end there. They went ahead and have the child. So what did they do? They now went to uh, they went to traditional garbage. So when the child was born, they were told to take the the afterbirth to secure that. I don't know how they do it now, but they secure it, and now they have to bury it at the rear of the home or wherever under a certain green tree or whatever. If it's a boy, it's a I think it's a banana tree. If it's a girl, it's a plant. Whatever it is, wow. all of this they are ignorant that these places become the altar for the spirits to visit and the child now become a sacrifice to that spirit. My God. They have no knowledge of it. So the, so the reality is the altars with those demonic places now begin to pull the spiritual strings of that child. So in the same Exodus chapter 20, when you go down to verse 24, God now begin to give these principles of the altars, because that's what it is, what they just did. He says, mm -hmm. an altar shall you do unto me. And he says, this is what I would want you to do to, to create this altar. And whenever you create it, he says, I, God, will visit this altar and I will bring blessings. Now, you cannot see God at the altar that he would have had you set up because he's a spirit. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. the same thing goes for an evil altar. So if God is bringing blessings to the godly altar, what do you think, what does common sense tell you will happen if you decide to follow these demonic things and create an altar and surrender your child blood and your blood from the afterbite to these demons? What do you think they're going to bring curses, limitations, can't go forward? The curse of divorce, you've been married six, seven times. The church condemning you because they're limited with spiritual knowledge. Because all they know how to do is beat you down and condemn. They don't know nothing else. Uh, they, they're not interested in searching out the root and severing that root so you could go forward. No, oh, you've been married three, four, five, six hundred times. You used to use the devil. You're going to hell. You're hell bound. 
The child who having child after child for different men, she's a whore, she's this. She, see, th this is what spiritual ignorance does. It, it gets you to spew foolishness because you lack spiritual knowledge. So the only thing you are trained into these, these, these dungeons of devils is to condemn, is to, to levy curses on people. Same mouth, death and life in. So they rather than speak life over you, speak change over you, rather than doing that, you, you, you will rain down the bastards. No one will never marry you. No decent person will ever hook up with someone like you with five and six different children with six different men. See, these are the things that they say and wonder why this child life didn't get better. Why would the six baby daddy end up infecting her and she died mm. from HIV and leave five other ch children on the world's account? See, nobody thinks this way. They, they quick to judge and condemn. That's why I have no respect for them. They are spiritually ignorant. They don't understand the spiritual implications where they ought to be fighting. Stop fighting the people. Stop cursing the people. All they are are puppets to the spirits, however it was invited into their lives, and it's pulling the strings to their life. As a Christian, you, you should go in your corner and come against that spirit that's attacking Susie and Mary. Come against that spirit of fornication and whatever else that is causing her not to be whom God has called. That's how you pray. You don't sit back and ridicule them and call them names and degrade them. I have no respect for no preacher, no apostle, nobody who does that because it is not the blueprint that Jesus Christ put in place. He didn't send us, he didn't change us, cleanse us of our sin and hide some of the filth we did. He didn't expose it only for us now to feel super safe to go out there. Oh, don't you got seven children for seven different men? My God, you don't got no TV. These are the things that they, 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 they are exposed to. Ripping the little last piece of hope that they have. The Christian comes and rip it straight from their heart. When I say Christian, I mean the ones who claim to be Christian but live a life totally different from what God has put in place. So these are the reasons why some people, you would be amazed to know who is speaking against your, your marital status right now. You would be amazed to know people right there in your circle, oh child, I can't wait for you to get married. I can be, I can be number one. I can be the, the so-and-so. The minute you turn your back, she will never get married. Never. I pray she marry an old dog who treated her like this. See, if you don't have the sense to say to yourself, not because this person said is Christian or calling me their friend, or I am their friend, that don't mean they wouldn't speak. I don't know what they're speaking in the dark, so I don't need to know. Because mm -hmm. I know the spiritual laws. Father, before I sleep tonight, every evil word that was spoken against my destiny, Father, I silence it in the name of Jesus. Let every word that they have spoken over myself, over my children, over my job, over my destiny, let it fall to the ground and become stepping stones to elevate me and catapult mm -hmm. me to where you have ordained me to be. I refuse to sit back and allow the curse words of some clown to keep me in bondage. I refuse to sit back and to believe that they have a title or some whatever, that they are better than me and I don't have no power over them. You, you were very fair. Life and death is in the power of the tongue. Anybody, everybody have that power. I decided Woo! to take the power and shut down every evil tongue, every venomous tongue, every poison tongue, every negative tongue. I command you to fall to the ground. I command you to become stepping stones and elevating me to what God has already called me to. Jesus. See, you're not enough. See, when you get tired, when you get tired of the foolery, when you get tired of playing church, when you really sit back and see, I've been following these clown rules all these years. I'm not getting ahead. Everybody in their mama getting ahead except me. Oh, you got to make the changes. You can't blame them. In fact, you're a Foolish to follow a pattern that you see was failing you. The devil is a liar. Every evil Jesus. altar speaking against my destiny. Everything mom and them planted, whatever they had, had recited, whatever evil concoction, Father, let it be destroyed in the realm of the spirit. I overthrow Ooh. every evil spiritual altar. I overthrow every physical altar. Whatever is hindering you from being Ooh. connected to the poison that God has called you to be, I, this day, that covenant has been destroyed. The covenant of evil that has been securing a delay in my destiny. The covenant of evil that has caused me not being able to connect 
to my person whom God has called me to, I command that covenant to be broken by the blood of Jesus. And Father God, now I repent of every evil I was a part of knowingly or unknowingly. Whatever my mother, father, Grammy, all the way back to the third and fourth generation, whatever secret society, whatever Delta, Alpha, Kalpa, whatever fraternity, sorority, wherever they made pledges and commitment where my destiny was used to be sacrificed for their pleasures, for their well, I overthrow it even now in the name of Jesus. Why? I don't have to be a Christian because the Bible says life and death is in the power of the tongue. Of the being you know, a Christian to shut it down. I don't have to be. I have the same power to shut that. The same way they spoke evil over me, I reject it. I renounce it. Father God, none of those things will ever take place in my life. Singles, you all better be listening. You will be married, not to anyone. You will be married to the person that God has specifically designed for you to prosper with, for you to grow old and enjoy life with. Does that mean you have a problem? Does that mean you only have some tough days? The devil is a liar. Of course you would. But the point is, because this is the person for you, because you as a person was living according to the rules, while you may have problems and issues, you have everything, the nuts and bolts in this relationship, that, that no matter what storm come, you are going to already commit to be with each other. So therefore, no external forces, no sweetheart, no side pieces, or whatever pieces will ever be able to infiltrate your relationship. That's what you need to be speaking don't sit back there and be no victim. Don't sit back there waiting for someone to put half a gallon of oil on you and kick and drop kick you all over the place with the spirit. No, no, no. The spirit on me right now, the same spirit on me, the same life and death within your tongue and in my tongue too. Yes. The Bible says say all things are possible to those that believe. So you got to decree it. You will have your Boaz. You will have the one that God has called you to be with. No, your days of being sick. In fact, you have already passed your time in being single. So you, you need to decree. You need to declare exactly what God has God said. God, you said it is not good for man to be alone. These weren't my words. You know the benefit of why I need to be connected. You have caused me to succeed to a certain point in life. And the other part of that is success. I have to connect with the right person. I must be divinely connected with the one whom you have put together. Not what I put together. Not what pastor put together. Not what mommy and them. They say no arranged marriage. It's my life you're talking about. You don't arrange nothing up in here. God, the only person to arrange anything as it comes to my significant other is the Lord Jesus Christ. Everybody else is the liar. We'll hear nothing from them. Get out of here with that foolishness. So let's go to 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians chapter 10. Because we want to see the spiritual implications. And I'm I talking to folks out there. If you or your family was involved in any kind of witchcraft, you all hear me and hear me well. I'm preaching this to my people every time I sit with them and counseling. You see people dying crazy. You see family members falling down one after the other. Hear me and hear me well. The minute their parents went to these fraternities, these secret societies, they mm. went to the witchcraft people to wake witchcraft from people or to take stuff from them to protect themselves. My friend, from that day, the clock was ticking away on you. And what clock is this? The clock to give you an early demise. The clock to shut you down uh, financially. The clock to limit you in terms of meeting with your significant other. This is what you got engaged to. This is the spiritual implication on your life that you did not know. When you came there for luck, when you came there for money, when you came there to fix some man with some love spell or fix some woman with some love spell, well, guess what? You got more than what you bargained for. All you got were limitations on your life in exchange for evil. Mm. No, no. The devil is a liar. Ooh, He's a liar. So let's go to 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians chapter 10. 1 Corinthians chapter 10. And let's go to verse 20. Actually, let's start from verse 19. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 19. This is Paul again talking to the church of Corinth. And again, the church, the Corinthian church, and the church of, of Ephesus, Ephesian church, 
they were they they were a people prior to accepting the Lord Jesus Christ who were deeply deeply uh, covenant with 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 demonic forces. They were deep into the occult, deep into esoterics and witchcraft and sorcery. They they trust me. They they had they had a clearer understanding of the spiritual realm. So they knew when Paul was talking about the things of the Lord, they could connect with that spiritually because they already tap into it from the evil side. So watch what Paul is going to say to them in verse 19, beginning at verse 19 at 1 Corinthians 10. It says, what say I then that the idol is anything or that which is offered in sacrifice to idol is anything. Now verse 20, he's about to shed light on what I just said. Yeah. When you took that umbilical, that, that after birth and buried it, when you uh, followed your Grammy advice. When you couldn't have children, you were barren. You and your husband been married for four or five years and can't make baby. Mm-hmm. Y'all didn't do the intravenous and spend thousands of dollars. Nothing happened. So they took you to these voodoo people and tell you to go dig dirt from around the corners of the house and mix it with water and drink it or mm-hmm. go to the four-way crossing or go down to the graveyard at a specific hour and put this spoon and this pitcher, all of this. Watch what the Bible said you were involved with, but you didn't know. So verse 20 says, but I say, this is Paul now, but I say that the things which the Gentiles sacrifice, the things that they had you to come and sacrifice, they sacrifice to who? They sacrifice to devils. Mm. Mm. So here it is, Paul is saying to you, that spiritual bath which you had, that ocean where they had you to drink, or they tell you put this in this man's food or put it in this woman's food and they can love you forever. Paul is saying, that while you could not see the demonic forces at that physical altar, it was overwhelmed and saturated with it. And whatever they gave you and you followed the instruction, that sealed the covenant. So this man who is forced to marry you under demonic power, there is no love. There is no Ooh. nothing there. It can Ooh. be fighting like cats and dogs living. More than likely, they end up killing one another. Why? Ooh. Because it's of the devil. And this is why I can stick to what I believe. When Jesus said, whom God put together, let no man. So this couldn't be of God. Come with that garbage to me. So don't tell me you run out there and grab somebody under witchcraft powers, put them under witchcraft spell and force them to marry you. They going up the altar like a zombie. And because the pastor say whom God has put together, the devil is a liar. The devil is a liar. God had nothing to do with that. That's why Jesus made it very clear. He said, whom God has put together, these two years should never separate. And if they separate and they decide to remarry, they'll come back with each other. This isn't for every marriage. This is for the marriage ordained by God. And that's why I'm telling people, if you are single, don't beg and plead with God for no Christian man. Don't beg and plead with God for no Christian woman. No. No. A lot of them are wolves in sheep clothing. Find me the one that you have ordained for me before the foundation of the world. That's the one I want. That's the one I want right there. I want the one whom God, who he know the end from the beginning with them as well, as he know the end from the beginning with me. And he know this would be the one for Kevin. This is the one who can bring him joy. This is the one who can assist him in his ministry. This is the one they can excel together. This is the group that I have blessed before the foundation of the world. But don't come bring no old raggedy iron person here to me talking mess. But who am I put together? God had nothing to do with that. I don't care who preachers believe it. I don't care what they think. I don't care what they feel. That don't mean nothing to me. I could read and I could comprehend. And not only that, I have seen the results of it. I have seen the results of forced marriages, voodoo marriages, manipulative marriages, meaning that these are how these people connected. And it's pure hell, pure evil. When they ain't stabbing and killing and shooting one another, they out having babies with all kinds of other people, bringing diseases into the marital. All of this because you're connected with the devil. You're connected with something Satan sent for you and calling it God. Get out of here. The devil is a liar. The devil is a liar. I play with you all tonight. The devil is a liar. Ooh. So I am begging you, your prayer should never in this life, never in this life pray for a Christian man to be your husband. Never in this life pray for a Christian woman. What you pray for is the will of the living God. And I'm open because guess what? The one who may come to you 
as the will of God may not be saved. What you gonna do then? I know what you can do. Oh. If you're traditional, you can go with tradition. Oh, uh, I can't mind you, the perfect person for you. I can't marry you because uh, you don't save and God save him as Beacon Leo. So you're gonna marry the Christian guy here, okay? Mind you, you don't have dream, but this man over here, it was done prophesied to you. It done come every which way that this is the yeah. person. But tradition yeah. is now dictating. This is the devil again, because the devil is behind tradition. The, the, and God said in this word, Matthew 15, verses 6 and 7, Mark uh, 7, verse 13. He said, it's because of your tradition that the word of God, meaning the promises of God, will never manifest in your life. So your tradition tell you, let me know, I can marry the Christian one over here because he save and I save and we, the Bible said be equally yoked. Mm -hmm. <coughs> so you, 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 you turn away God's best for your life. That's what I want, his best. So you go and marry this guy, okay? All along he was playing Christian and got three other women pregnant, <coughs> okay? While you all were saving, you all even say, I do yet. And now <coughs> you find out. And then he come on with a slick talk. Well, you know, we all fall short of the glory of God, baby. And all I want you to do is forgive me so we could go forward. And all is, all he doing is giving you a little of what a lot is going to be like once you don't seal that covenant with him. And then baby mom is coming kick down your door and shaming you in public. All you can do is remember... I wish I had listened to Kevin. I wish I had prayed for God best. I wish I had prayed for God destiny. I wish I didn't follow tradition. But you follow tradition now and look how life panning out for you. Huh? You got these Chinese showing all up in your place. Huh? None of them is yours. Guess what? Not only that, he stopped working. He don't want to work no more. So your money now got to take care of him and these Chinese children need to bring there too. Huh? And that's what you want. And you still the will of God because you save and she save. Yeah. Wake up, people. Wake up. Wake yeah. up. Wake up. God says, I know the plans that I have for you. They are good and not evil. You think you really believe God bring this to your life? You really believe God go there looking for a man who can bring all kind of baby there? Huh? A man who will be in another woman bed every night while you crying and pining and scared to have sex with him without a condom because you don't know if he can bring you disease? You mm. really think God bring that to you? Anyway. If that's what you believe, my friend, not on you. So the bottom line is this. <clears throat> Three reasons I showed you so far where a person who should have been married but still single. And all of it, like I would have said earlier in my opening statement, the root of all of these things are spiritual. It is the spiritual aspect of these things that we are ignorant to, that most of our churches are not teaching us. We don't know nothing about no altar. We don't know nothing about excuse me, these spiritual things. We don't know how to, we, we are we are taught, and that's why I tell you, I don't fool up with these churches, not all. We are not taught that you could actually speak against what's coming against you. We are taught, oh, let pastor pray over your anointed oil. You could pray over your oil too. Oh, let pastor pray for you. You could pray for you too. Oh, you, you, you all your life, you are taught to depend on a person. When Jesus, in his three years of ministry, from 30 to 33, after he get these guys trained, he said, now look here, y'all go. Go into the world. Don't hang up around me no more. Go out there and do what I've been, what y'all been watching me do. This Woo! spiritual part and spiritual son and spiritual often foolishness, stop this mess and go out there and win souls. Go out there and heal people. Go out there and educate them about the spiritual things that are holding them back from encountering or experiencing their destiny. All of these stupid rules that have nothing to do with Jesus Christ. And look at the results. Look at these people fruit who following the lead of this demented person and the only one who's prospering, the only one who's advancing, the only one whose children is advancing is this group, who, this guy or this woman or whoever who is telling you these rules that is completely contrary to the rules, the laws, the principles, the ordinance, and the precepts of the living God. So you got nobody to blame but yourself. If you choose to sit another year in these dungeons of devils and believing for some reason your Boaz or whoever else can come in there on some white horse and lift you up and go marry you, it will never happen. That's why it's called spiritual warfare. You got to fight, but you got to fight with the word of the living God. You got to fight with the wisdom, the knowledge, and the understanding. Not no riddles and rhymes. Not no double for your trouble. Not no shift in the atmosphere. Not no sow a seed. 
not no purchasing hundred dollar man and two hundred dollar foolishness. That's why you're still single. How many men you have paid for with seed, and you got the devil if you got anybody at all? How much longer? When are you gonna wake up and say this makes no sense? Let me do this man. This man is this man ain't asking me for no money. This man ain't asking me for nothing. All he's telling me is to do the word of God. This man is pointing me to the scriptures. This man is telling me to engage the scriptures. This man is breaking down the laws to tell me what I need to do to change my life. And the only garbage I could come up with is what my pastor telling me. Don't listen to him. He divorced. He this, he that. The man ain't telling you nothing to mess up your life, but everything so you don't repeat the mistakes he made in his life. What better example, like the scriptures say, what better love than of a man laid on his life for another? That's exactly, they tell me I'm going to hell. They say, you married? And you was married before you go going to hell. You know what I tell them? Well, guess what? You should applaud me that even though I know I'm going to hell, I still trying to take other people out of hell. I trying to tell them the right things to do in life. Now, ain't that noble? Even though I'm on the way to hell, according to y'all, even though I'm bound for hellfire, according to y'all, I ain't mm -hmm. taking nobody with me. I trying to get them to do it the right way so that they wouldn't have to encounter these things that others encountered. Mm. Mm. So I'm going to end with this. <clears throat> the Bible is very clear that the spirit of anti-marriage, the spirit that is fighting that single person never to be married is strictly from the bowels of hell. And yeah. the Bible says in John 10 and 10, it says that the thief, which is Satan, yeah. he came specifically to kill, to steal, and to destroy. Now, this is the disadvantage to the human. You cannot see him. You ain't gonna see when he coming. However, the Bible didn't leave you empty-handed. He now gives you a he gives you a set of laws to to review or to look at, so you would know when he come in. So John ten and ten says the enemy come to kill, to steal, and destroy. Right? Ephesians chapter six verse twelve says that we must put on the whole armor of God. Right? But but we, sorry, Ephesians six and twelve tell us about the uh, the level of demonic powers that we're fighting against but, but Ephesians 6 verse 11 says that we must put on the whole arm of God so that we may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil so with that in mind the scripture is telling me okay Kevin just told you about the spiritual implications but it's a lot more though while you may be fully aware of the spiritual implication you need to know the other rules that will lessen the attack or the impact of the attack so what you're saying, mm. Kevin, okay, so the believer, you now who are single, because the enemy coming at you left, right, and center, how do you mitigate? How do you lessen this attack? Well, Ephesians 6 and 11 says, I must put on the whole armor of God. Mm -hmm. Listen, even though I have Jesus in my life, even though I'm saved, sanctified, filled with the Holy Spirit. So he's saying that alone isn't going to stop the attack. He said, now put on the whole arm of God. Then he tell you why. So that now you will be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. So it's telling me, if I don't have this armor on, I'm susceptible, okay? Or I'm open for future attacks. Because the scripture is telling me. He comes back in verse 13. He says, put on the whole arm of God so that you may be able to stand in the evil day. So he didn't say, if an evil day is coming, when it comes, it comes. Mm -hmm. So he's telling me how to prepare myself spiritually. All this jumping around and Jesus is delivering back summer. So that, that don't mean nothing if you're not engaging the rules. Mm -hmm. And the sad part about it, look at those in church just like you, who in their 60s now still dancing Jesus is a deliverer, ain't got no man, ain't got no woman, bitter, angry, got nothing positive to say. Why? Because all their life they follow tradition. Now that it didn't pan out for them, they better and angry at everybody except for the one who's telling them these things, right? So watch this now. He's telling you to put on this armor because this devil, whose main job, according to John 10 and 10, is to kill, to steal, and to destroy. So watch this because he's always working. Let's go to Job. Let's go to Job chapter 1, and we're going to read uh, from verse 6 to verse 7. Job chapter 1. 
verse 6 to verse 7. Now listen to this. Now there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan came also among them. So these are all spirits, the sons of God, uh, God, Satan, these are all invisible beings. So God is, quote unquote, having a conference, and the sons of God who came before him, Satan came there also. Now, it's not saying that Satan is the son of God, just that he showed up to this meeting also. So verse 7 is the part that got me. Eh. The Lord said unto Satan, where comest thou, or where, where are you coming from? Then Satan answered the Lord and said, listen, from going to and fro in the earth and walking and from walking up and down. Okay, Satan, I make no sense. So would you, you do an exercise? No. He's looking for someone who lack knowledge. He's looking for someone who's spiritually ignorant. He's looking for someone who he can take advantage of. Kevin, you better prove this. Okay, no problem. Let's go to First Peter. Let's go to First Peter, uh, chapter five, verse eight. First Peter, chapter five, verse eight, and listen to what it says. First Peter, chapter five, verse eight says, "Be sober, be vigilant." Why? Because your adversary, the devil, uh huh. What is he doing? The av your adversary, the devil. As a roaring lion. Now, this is key. Here. It didn't say he is. So he's always pretending to be something he's not. He says, as a roaring lion, mm -hmm. lion, sorry, walking about, seeking whom he may devour. So we just read in Job chapter 1, verses 6 and 7, when God asked him, where you came from? What you doing here? And yeah. He says, I just come from up and down, night looking. But what was he looking for? So you see, the context of what that is, is it's been explained in First Peter chapter 5, verse 8. He isn't just walking to and fro. He isn't doing a, a power walk or exercise. He is looking for whom he may devour. And who mm -hmm. is these people? These people are those who are spiritually ignorant. These are people who are traditional. These are people who talk about God or live a form of godliness, but never ever coming to the truth. These are people who are not sober, who are not vigilant, because all they ever go off, oh, I've been saved for 500 years, and I'm filled with the Spirit of God, no fruit in their life, no advancement, no marriage, no nothing in their life. Mm. But they have already sung that song for so long, I'm saved and sanctified. In fact, they will make stupid statements such as, child, I'm more saved than you. You could be more saved. I didn't know there was a measuring scale on how so much saved you could be. So these, so 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 the Bible is telling us that Satan is looking. Hold on, whoa, 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 whoa. I see Tom family right there. Mm -hmm. Right. Now, listen, listen what the Bible say now. This is Proverbs chapter twenty six, verse two b. The curse caused this cannot come. So before Satan couldn't do nothing, but now we see, hold on, I see where they give the children spiritual bath. I see where they give them spiritual concoction and incisions in their skin and wearing amulets. So mm -hmm. this is who I could devour. I see over here where the mummy curse the children and tell them they'll be whores and rain on the bastard and never have good husband and wives. I'm going to, I, I can go over here and dominate. I can go over here and rule. Mm. You see how he's taking advantage of mankind. But guess what? Mankind is co-partnering with him ignorantly. Why? Because they lack spiritual knowledge. The Bible is extremely clear. Hosea 4 and 6. My people perish. Why? Because they lack knowledge. Uh, Isaiah chapter 5 verse 13. My people are gone into captivity or spiritual limitations. Why? Because they lack knowledge. However, Proverbs 11 verse 9b, it says, through knowledge... Yes, to just be delivered, and that's what I came to bring. I came to bring knowledge. I don't want nothing from you. I want to give you the knowledge, and I want you to exercise it because it's the same thing would free me from depression and failed relationship, divorce, all of these things. God sever from my life. I didn't mm. have to sow no seed. I didn't have to spin around some salt, cabbage patch. None of that garbage I had to do. My confidence, my belief was in the word of God, and God back it up in this word. Uh, 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 Hebrews chapter 10, verse 35. He says, Kevin, do not lose confidence in my word because it is in this word shall work a great recompense of reward. The word recompense means to, to repay me of the losses. 
the, the home I lost, the marriage I lost, the finances I lost, the everything I lost, the mm. word of God that I never lose confidence in, replenish, recompense me. So nobody could tell me no mess. I don't care what they tell me. The God of all restoration, the God of all hope, the God that is not out to hit me over the head and condemn me. He yes. was the one that recompensed me. He was the one that wiped those tears from my eyes. He was the one when I was on the brink of depression and suicide. Pull me back because I believe in the word, not a human. And that's why I left the four walls. It's a place of bondage, not all. It's a place of condemnation. It's a hopeless place. It is mm. not a place of God. That's why I left. But again, not all of them. The majority of them, they live a form of godliness and the evidence is there. Very few, if any, are prospering. Very few, if any, are getting ahead. And the minute mm. you bring this to their attention again, where they so bound, well, prosperity don't only mean material things. I never said that. I mentioned <laughs> I was delivered from, 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 from suicide and depression and, and almost losing my mind. But where they're so programmed that because they know they're not prospering, they got to look for something in your statement to bring up some irrelevant garbage. The mm. devil is a liar. I ain't mm. convincing nobody to believe what I believe. I don't care. I know it worked for me. And I will continue to run this race with the laws, arms, with the laws, the rules, and the principles. Because this is what pulled me out of the trap and the snares of the evil one. No pastor did that for me. No mm. church, no apostolic, Baptist, Pentecostal, Anglican. None of them did that for me. My, Come on. Faith, my confidence was in the word of God. When I was losing sleep, when I couldn't sleep, when I was being tormented by demons and demon manifestation, when there was no hope, the God of all hope, the God of all restoration, that was the one who showed up for me. And that's why you see why I have the passion. You see why I'm so happy to bring people from where they once were and bring them into their destiny. Because I know what it's like to be there. I know what it's like to be condemned. I know what it's like to go to a place and follow all the rules and whatever nonsense there. And there is no hope. There is no change. Same rigmarole, same dance, just a different day. I had to make a change. I couldn't blame them no more when I knew better. I had to put the knowledge that God has blessed me with into practice. I couldn't yes. wait on nobody for that. So now when I look back and I see how God has restored me in every area of my life and he exceeded, like he said in Ephesians 3 and 20, I will do exceedingly and abundantly and above all that you could ever imagine. I, I remember one time I was so down and out and I just opened my Bible. I said, Lord, just speak to me. And when I opened the Bible and I rest my eyes on that scripture, eyes have not seen. Mm. Ears have not, I literally began to weep while I was reading it because even though I was nowhere near what that scripture was saying, I had a belief out of this world that mm. this got to happen. Father, I'm giving you my heart. I believe, but I have no other hope. I can't turn nowhere. I can't turn to the left or the right. There's nobody who can help me, only you. And yes. I just immerse myself in the word of God. While they was calling me everything except a child of God. They tell me I had church hurt. They tell me you this. I didn't care because where I was emotionally, I didn't have time for that nonsense. I had to put and concretely put myself in the word of God. So I left. I look at all of them today. Who had they say? 10, 11 years later, in the same position, I left them in. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, uh. Amen. I'm done. Wow. I'm done. <laughs> wow, wow, wow. Oh, my God. Pastor Kevin. Oh, my gosh. I'm here like literally I had to put myself on mute, y'all. Because I'm like... I had to scream. I said, oh, my God, he's hitting some spots. Oh, my gosh. Thank you. Thank you so Very much, welcome. Pastor Kevin. Oh, my goodness. Um, I mentioned in the um, chat, um, if anybody had any questions, would you be able to take a few questions? Yes, sure, sure. Okay. Um, so if you have any questions, I already saw a few that was put in the chat, and I'm going to go back up. Um, we're going to take a few questions um, before we end the night. So let's see. I'm going all the way up. All right. First question is, let's 
see one moment. Okay. So if I had wasted my life and now I am a child of God and walking in the will of God now, so can I still get the mate God intended for me to have if his plans for me hasn't changed? This is from Sandra Knowles. Right. Very, very common question. Well, God himself, well, I, I, I cannot be presumptuous and say you presumptuous and say you could get that intended mate simply because that person might already be married. We don't know. Mm. But let me tell you what the Bible does say, though. The Bible says, because God, and this is what I love about God, he knew that you would have gone off course. He knew you would have been delayed. He knew there were things you would have gotten involved in that would peg you spiritually at a point where while you may be seemingly going forward physically, you were locked down spiritually. So he put this rule in his law, Joel 2 and 25. And this is what he said. He says, I will restore unto you, not some, but all of the years that the canker worm, the caterpillar, the locust, and the palm worm, and all of these insects that he's talking about, these are just symbolic of demonic forces that was eating away at your spiritual blessings in Ephesians 1 verse 3. So, excuse me. so God knew, he knew that you would mess up, but he also knew you would come back around, just like the prodigal son. The father never, but the father say, look, I, 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 I know you were coming back and I already had things in place for you. So the person who asked that question, uh, these are the scriptures you need to focus on. Proverbs 11, verse 31a, and it says, the righteous, if you are a Christian, that means you are righteous. So this simply means, this promise is for you, the righteous shall be recompensed on the earth, meaning that God will repay you for the losses you've suffered. This is guaranteed. Joel 2 and 25, like I would have just stated, he will restore you the years that you've lost. Uh, Hebrews 10 verse 35, he says, listen, do not lose hope or confidence in my word and the promises, for mm. it will work for you. And this is a part I love, a great recompense of reward. So the adjective that he used before the word reward was the word great. And he's saying in this new covenant, the New Testament, the way that I'm going to replenish you or to reimburse you is going to exceed what I'm going to give you will exceed the losses you've suffered. Mm. So God's word is saturated with how he is going to replenish you for your losses. Oh, and this is why you should be grateful that he's all-knowing. You should be grateful that he, he knew you wouldn't have taken the part originally. But he says, don't worry about that. I got a plan right here. I got the, uh, this, this contingency plan right here just for you. When you get your act together and you finally had enough, Come right over here. I don't care much they condemn you. Come right here. I don't care much they curse you. And he will now make do. And I am speaking from experience. I mm. tell my story all the time. 40 years old, lost everything. Marriage, uh, apartment complex, property. I had to move back home with my mother at 40 years old. No wow. money in the bank, nothing. That's hope for me. <laughs> and now, listen, now I'm uh, debt free. Have a wonderful mm. wife, living like a king. I like to put it that way, living the abundant life and doing what I always like to do, and that is ministering, teaching, and encouraging people and pointing them always to the scripture. So whoever you are, that's why it is always hope. Whoever tells you that you are hopeless is of the devil, and you need to rebuke them because there's hope for you. Amen. Amen. All right, and next question, Bonita says, is it biblical? I think you answered it, but she said, is it biblical to pray for a spouse? Have not found any account in the Bible regarding praying for a spouse. No, it's, it, it isn't wrong to pray for a spouse. It is how you pray for the spouse. See, remember, if you already come to the conclusion that God has already put a spouse in place for you, then what your prayer should be, you shouldn't, I hear people say all the time, but you need to tell God, tell him you want him tall or short, garbage. You're going to say to God, Father, I am coming in agreement right now with whomever you have ordained for me. See, because remember, you when you tell God, oh, he got to be short and bow leg and he got to work in the bank and have at least $300,000 on his account, you don't need God. <laughs> you could go to the, to the rich doctor and get that. What you're doing here is I'm going with the belief that God, who has a plan for my life, marriage being inclusive of that, the same God who told me 
it is not beneficial for me to be alone. God, it is you that I'm coming to. And I pray that you give me the patience to wait with expectation for you to bring that person. I ain't no Christian. I ain't saying, God, I want no Christian. I ain't saying, God, I want no pastor. God, whoever you yes. have appointed for me, let that person and that person alone come in my path. Amen. Amen. All right. Um, am I being judgmental? When I think about marriage, I consider the success that the Lord has granted me. And I don't want any way to come into anyone, I guess you were saying, to come in my life with their evil ways. And I think I would have that question for me too, because I'm often hearing people saying to single people, especially in the church or whatever, telling them, oh, you need to keep your mind off of marriage. Like, why are you desire, almost like making them seem like they're desperate. Excellent question, and it kind of come off the heels of what I've just answered. Mm -hmm. Th this is only more support uh, why you should pray the will of God. Mm -hmm. You don't think God knew you'd have been successful? You don't. He knows this, so only Him could connect you with a person who only wants you for your money, who only wants you for sex. But guess what? When that divine connection come together, mm -hmm. what you have now will be a drop in the bucket compared to what y'all will build together. Mm -hmm. See, and if people would see it that way. And I tell you, we live in such a materialistic society and so much of us come from backgrounds where it was drilled into our skulls. Find someone who could do this. So what happened to the woman who already have her own home? What happened mm. to the woman who already advanced in life? What's going to happen then? Because come on, it's, it, it, it's become 10 times harder for her to find someone who truly will love her for her. Mm. Seeing her as a meal ticket. So this is why she really got to get on her knees and really fast, Father, you have blessed me with this wealth. You have blessed me with these opportunities. You have blessed me with these resources. Now, Lord, send me the person that will now complement what you have blessed me with, and we can now build even more together. One who I could see myself with, and be, I don't have to worry about them using me or only want me. Only prayer could do that. Mm. This is why you see me get so angry when I these demon churches talking foolishness. But if you want God give you the right man, come sow a seed of a thousand dollars, and we'll throw in there a whole lawyer with you if you want that, or Doctor Indian Chief. All of this is witchcraft. All of this is sorcery. All of this is demonic tradition mm. that was set you up for the wrong person. It's like Satan just begging you to marry the wrong person to secure divorce, to secure mm. misery. All because this so-called leader of God is mm. pulling out every type trick other than what the Bible says. It will never work. Amen. Never. Amen. Uh, I have a question that says, what happens if you receive prophecy on your man of God um, and any of it never occurred and he never appeared and you ask the Lord for clarity but still have not seen or heard it? The first thing I would advise anybody, especially when it comes to prophecies, and especially if people are, are desperate, and I'm not, I'm not saying this person is desperate, whatever prophecy is laid on your life, and I had to learn this the hard way, mm. this is my advice to you. I don't care who it is. I don't care how much they are on target. Once that prophecy is released, where do you say it out loud or where do you say it in your spirit? Father, if this prophecy is from you, if this is your will, then let everything that I've said come to pass. Remove all of the stops, the hurdles, and whatever the enemy will do to hinder or to stop this, Father, remove it, and I come in agreement. However, if this is not of you, God, if this is not what your plans were, instead, this is a curse coming off as a prophecy, I reject it even now in the name of Jesus. This will have no effect on my life. This will mm. never get its claws into my destiny. I banish it to the pits of hell. Stop trusting people because they say they are prophets and prophetess. You've got to protect you. This is your life. This is your destiny. Because guess what? If you go out there and mess up and things turn haywire based on what they said, do you think they're going to take responsibility? Do you yep. think they're going to say, oh, the house you lost in that marriage, I'm going to give you a new one. You think that's going to happen? No. <laughs> what they're going to tell you is you are sin in your life. That's why it happened. Uh... Protect you. You got to protect you. I listen. I got, I got so much stories with false prophecies and them how they turned my life because I believe this garbage and so and see it. That's why I hate it. So I tell whoever that person is, 
reject it. If you, and especially if they gave you a date and that didn't come to pass, don't just reject it, my friend. Go on a fast to break the covenant between you and that prophet that you receive. When they say, woman of God, man of God, raise your hand. Do you receive? Yes, sir. Yes, sir, daddy, I receive it. Let it be done in the name of Jesus. Let it be. But Jesus, I have nothing to do with that. So you just came in covenant with something that's going to delay your destiny, that is causing you not to connect with what God has already put in place because you receive a word, death and life still reside in the power of the tongue and even voice when you agreed with it. So even right now, Eve, I don't care who pray over your life, who fast, sorry, who prophesy, Father, right now, based on this knowledge, every mm -hmm. evil prophecy, every evil word over my life in marriage, finances, in regard to my whole destiny, that was not of you. I reject it. I renounce it. I denounce it. In fact, I divorce my spirit, soul, and body, and my destiny from these evil words that has been spoken over my life. Now, Father God, with that being out of the way, let your will run its course unhindered in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. So I think we're going to wrap up in a minute. Um... So we're gonna let the man of God go. He's been going in. Um, I'm gonna see about take about one or two more questions. This is a question. Um, it's two and one. I think they can go together, and I think you just answer it. But let me just read it. The first one says, "How can someone who is ignorant of these things break these uh, things totally of your life?" And I think you answer that. And the second one that goes with that, that sounds the same as, "How can someone who?" It, who's ignorant of their ancestors' past beat these curses um, or break these curses of their lives for good and have the Lord and have the God kind of results? I think they're right. trying to see. Yeah, I get it. Well, this is a question that is often asked. People always say, well, Kevin, I don't know if someone did evil in my... It mm -hmm. don't matter. First of all, I don't need to know what they did. What I look for now as the litmus test I look for patterns. For example, my family, my mother's side, divorce, divorce, divorce. So I don't need to know if somebody did something. Clearly something happened. If her mother was divorced, she was divorced, I'm divorced, I got cousins divorced, my brother's divorced. I mean, I don't need to be a voodoo expert to understand <laughs> that something mm. is wrong here. Based on the spiritual knowledge that I have, that generational curses, the evidence of it, is the consistency of negative patterns in a family. Mm. If I see uncle die from cancer, brother, sister, cousin, nephew, niece, I don't need to be a spiritual genius here. So how would I know when someone did something in the bloodline? Well, when I see patterns of negativity, why are all your sisters got children, none married? And the ones who did get married, guess what? Their marriage lasts for 15 minutes or they get married late in life. 40 mm. something, 50 something, 60, and that didn't last. And even if they together, it's pure tension because there's a curse when it comes to marriage on this family. Mm. So now that I know that these, these curses, generational curses, will never, never in this life be destroyed by prayer alone. J Jesus said in Matthew uh, 17 21, He said, This kind, this level, this, this, this hierarchy of evil power will only come out through prayer and fasting. So now I must incorporate fasting along with my prayer to sever the covenant that was established with my ancestors that created the doorway or portal to allow the curse of infirmity, to allow the curse of anti-marriage, to allow the curse of divorce. These, this was how they came in and now they're just taking their time and walking through the generation, seeking whom they may devour. That's how mm. we're doing it. All right. And our final question for tonight. Um, this person says, is there such a thing as right person, wrong time, or changing a sin into a blessing like what God did with David, 2 Samuel 12 to 24? Again, this that question there, basically, I answered that earlier. Pray okay. the will of God. Mm -hmm. Even if you feel you have missed it, Father, let your will, let what you, whatever, because whatever, okay, let's say the person you were supposed to marry, because of whatever delay that happened in your life, this person ended up marrying somebody else. Okay, what do I do now? 
I do what I always was doing. Father, let your will, whatever your backup plan was, whatever you had ordained before the foundation of the world, because you knew, this is the key, he knew that this would have happened. So therefore, I don't want to do this on my own. I did it before. I've been messing up. It brought me plenty of pain and heartache. So Father, let your will. I am surrendering to your will. I am surrendering to the leading of your Holy Spirit. Let your will and that which you have ordained for me before the foundation of the world, let that come to pass. Secondly, for those who may say, well, how would I know? I mean, still, how would I know? Good. Father, just like how you gave proof to Gideon. I am asking you, if this is the person you showed me in my dream, if this person who was prophesied to me, then Lord, confirm whatever you said spiritually, confirm it physically. Mm. Not one time, not two times. God, I'm asking you to do it three times because I want to be sure. I want to be certain that this is what you want. So that is key. Totally mm. surrendering it to God, asking God to support this with physical evidence that this is the will. Because I'm telling mm -hmm. you, I'm warning you, you do not, you do not want to connect with something that appear to be God, only for you to seal that in covenant and all hell break loose. And you could imagine, think about this, you could imagine you've been waiting, you've done 35, 40, 45, 50. And all this mm -hmm. time you've been praying only to marry the wrong person because you refuse to acknowledge the red flags. You refuse to follow the spiritual laws to point out or discern this person. Now, almost half of your life, you lock with this person who treating you like a dog, who talk to you any kind of way, who have no respect for you, who don't, mm -hmm. as a woman, they don't open no door for you, pull no he don't tell, he don't express his loving, affectionate, he jump on you like you or some animal, do his thing, and go sleep in the next room. Got a bunch of side pieces, all because you refuse. Remember the scripture I always say, uh, Proverbs 13, verse 18. It says, poverty and shame shall be to those that refuse instructions. Mm -hmm. Very clear. Mm -hmm. Proverbs 4, verse 13 says, grab fast hold of instructions. Keep her, for she is thy life. Uh, Psalms 32, verse 8, God made this promise. He says, I will instruct you and teach you and show you in the way in which you should go. And I would watch over you with my eyes. Verse 9 says, do not be like the mule in whom you have to put a bit in its mouth and pull it in the direction that it needs to go. So mm -hmm. you should just, at this point in your life, really surrender it all to God. God, listen, I've been trying to do this on my own. I've been trying to figure this out. I leave this in your hand. Direct me, lead me, send words of confirmation and affirmation to let me know if I am on the right path or if I'm not on the right path. Amen. Amen. Oh, my gosh. That's amazing. This teaching has been so amazing. And last thing I want to say, uh, Minister Kevin, because somebody said something that struck out to me. Um, does that also apply to adopted kids? What do you mean? Children? Somebody asked a question about how does generational, let's see, it says, would that same concept apply to being adopt, adopted regarding breaking curses without knowing the family history? Oh, definitely, because you don't know okay. what type lineage there you, you have to break, and you can break it over them. Okay. Okay. You can break it oh over Oh, my them. gosh. This has been amazing. Oh, my goodness. I want to <laughs> thank Pastor Kevin, so much. I thank you You're so welcome. much for answering our questions. This, I, Listen, after this teaching, yes, everybody should leave here with another mindset, right. another purpose. You, your mind should be like, okay, I know what to do. I know what curses I need to break. We need to evaluate and look at our mm -hmm. family lives and see what is going on. What are those hindrances and those distractions and those things? And be honest and open to say, okay, Lord, help me to break these curses in my right. family. And let me be honest to look at the track record. <laughs> right. Right. And so um, this has been amazing. Um, and I mean, I'm I'm just I'm just honored and I'm humbled that you would even grace this platform, Kingdom Language Utterance. And um, I'm going to let everybody go for tonight. Those who are in the chat, thank you so, so, so much for coming and being a part of the show tonight. Um, Minister Kevin, before we go, can you just pray us out, please? 
Right, I'll pray you out, but I just want to make this last comment before I go. Okay, I'm sure. really speaking to those who are who are not married, who already engage and contemplate contemplating going straight through in terms into the marriage. My my final advice to you, uh, I say this all the time, look before you leap. Look at that person's family, look at their lineage. Trust me, if there is a history of divorce, if there's a history of them not treating their spouses right, if there's a history where their spouse is always leaving them, trust me, remember now, when you marry them, like the Bible says, you're becoming one, and you now become a part of a curse that you had nothing to do with before. But because you are one now, you inherit whatever it is that they're dealing with, likewise them you. So while you may be desperate to be married and you're all happy, the red flags are always there. If you, if their parents don't like you and, and every time there's a problem, they always take the parents' side, run. All of these are signs that when you and them fall out in the relationship and they decide to go back to mommy or daddy, mommy and daddy already proved to you before they get married, we don't like you. So when they come here, we only can remind him or her that we told them from day one how no good you were. Mm. If you see where they can, every time they make a decision, the decision is based on what pastors say, what sisters say, what this one say. Again, these are red flags that they are not mature to conduct a marriage. Run for your life. Mm. If this the person who do want to marry you, all right, but from the get-go, they're showing you their money is their money and your money is your money. And when they take you out, you got to pay for your meal and they pay for their meal. Run for your life, mm. especially if they have children. You know why? Because their children is going to be priority and they're going to do things that they should be doing with you, the wife or husband. No, 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 no. The children is going to get that. So that means the children can come and cause trouble anytime because once daddy's girl or mommy's son, boy, say, I don't like him or make up some story against you, it can be conflict. Run mm. for your life because there'll be no peace and the peace will only come about which is not real based on what you subject yourself to, meaning what you submit to yourself under, meaning that even though you don't like this, you just to sick have peace, no human should live that way. Run mm. for your life. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this session tonight. We thank you, Father God, because we are of the belief, because you are all-knowing, and because you know the end from the beginning, this session was ordained before the foundation of the world. Uh, before uh, Minister McPhee and myself even knew anything of each other, you had already incorporated this in your plan. For that, Father God, we thank you. We thank you for your wisdom, for your knowledge, for your understanding that you've bestowed upon myself and even the hearers of your word tonight. I thank you, Father God, that you've given them the understanding to assimilate what was said and to take fast hold of instructions and to now apply them, not just to walk away and say, oh, this was a good message. Oh, he was on fire. Oh, the chat room was hot. Instead, I'm going to apply these things to my life because I have to see a change. I'm going to do this because I didn't do this before. Let me implement this now and watch the power and the promises of God run its course in my life. Father, as a repairer of the breach, according to the protocol that I would have followed in Isaiah 58, I take authority over every ancestral and generational curse over everyone listening right now whose lives have been tied up in terms of... Uh, being single for so long when they should have been married, meaning that there are spiritual uh, implications in and levied upon their lives that is causing them not to go forward. Father, just like how you rain down fire and brimstone upon the two wicked cities of Sodom and Gomorrah, I'm asking you, I'm begging, I'm beseeching you to rain down spiritual fire and brimstone against every evil contract, every evil covenant, every evil agreement that these people may not even be aware of and sever the connection between them and those evil altars and agreements that are stagnate, yes. that has limited, that has caused them not to see any form of progress. Father, yes. sever the cords, the chains, the feathers. And now, Father God, catapult them to where they should have been at this stage and this yes. point in their lives. 
Father, I speak as an oracle of Jesus Christ, Lord, and break every evil word over their lives. Every yes. negative word that has been spoken by their teachers, by their parents, by their guardians, yes. by their friends, by their ex-husbands, by their husbands, ex-wives, by their wives, by their ex-boyfriends, girlfriends, every evil word, every yes. evil uh, decree, everything that was declared over them that was totally against your will and your way. Father, let it be dissolved by fire. And the devils that were attached to those evil words to consistently repeat those evil instances in their lives, Father, this day we command by the blood of Jesus, we command by the power of Christ that every yes. devil, every demon will leave their lives indefinitely in the name of Jesus. Yes, now, Father God, I pray that you would usher into their lives that peace, that peace that passes all understanding, rip away from them every spirit of, of fear, anxiety, depression, every spirit of hopelessness, every spirit of condemnation. Father, let it be dissolved by Holy Ghost fire even now in the name of Jesus Christ. And Father, I pray that you send the angels of peace upon them right now to give them a new start. I come against every spirit of procrastination that will cause them to delay when it comes to acting upon the word they heard tonight. I come yeah. against every spirit, Father God, of being lackadaisical. Every yeah. spirit, Father God, that will enter their mind, that will try to steal the word from them. Father, I bring confusion to every devil, every demon, every stronghold, every evil opposing power. Father, cause it it caused these powers, evil powers, to lose these people's geographical location, to lose their identity, Father God, so that now the angels of the Lord, whom you've given charge over them to keep them in all their ways, Father God, will now begin to continually protect them. I pray right now that the spirit of truth, the Holy Spirit, will now take command of their life and destiny and now begin to lead them into all truth, lead them to the people, the places, the opportunities that you've had in place before the foundation of the world. You've said in your word, for those who have missed out on their opportunities, those yes. whose opportunities has passed them by, you, you said, according to Proverbs 6, 30 to 31, that if the thief be found, we, you have given us this authority to demand and command the thief right that has stolen our destiny, that has stolen the opportunities, we command and demand that he return to us sevenfold in the name of yes. Jesus Christ of yes. Nazareth. Father, we stand on your word tonight, Father God, and we command the devil, Father God, to return, to yes. return us back to, to, to marriages that we should have already been engaged in, everything, our finances, our health, our mentality, our spirits, everything that this devil, this demon, this evil spirit has wiggled his way into our lives through our yeah. ignorance. Father, yeah. God, we command right now, right now by the blood and in the name of Jesus Christ for us to be restored in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Lord, because you came and you put the icing on the cake in Joel 2 and 25, where you said, you, you will restore now. You will restore unto us. Yes, God. All the years, the canker worm, the caterpillar, the locust, and the palmer worm has eaten away. Father God, we receive that restoration right now. We receive that restoration. You said in your word, according to Psalms 138 and 8, and it says that you will perfect or make perfect or complete all that concerns us. Father, we receive it right now in the name of Jesus. The days of sadness are done. The days of failure are done. The days of running yes. around with these fruitless relationships are done. No more three, four, five, ten years engagement and no marriage. We break yes. the curses of anti-marriage. We break yes. the curses of delay. We break yes. the curses of stagnation. We break the curses of the enemy hook and shackles and chains. They're all severed by the blood of Jesus Christ. Jesus. Now, Father God, we receive your word where you said in your word, Father God, that, that it, it, is your, it, it is your desire that we prosper. It is your desire that we go yeah. forth. So, Father God, we claim and lay claim to the promises that you have laid in your word for us, Lord. And at this day, we make a commitment, Father God, to follow your word. 
Finally, Father God, we break every false prophecy, every Ooh. evil declaration, every mm. so-called word from the living God that we are to sow a demonic seed for, which had nothing to do with you because you made it clear in your word, the promises of God are yea and amen. Yes. So, Father, we apologize. Father, we repent, Father God, for being lazy and not reading the word for ourselves and allowing these people to come and to manipulate us and cause us to subtly engage in covenants that had nothing to do with you, but everything to do with the enemy and giving them the legal right to take us on our destiny that had nothing to do with you. Mm. So we thank you for your word that says, according to 1 John 1 and 9, that if we confess our sins, that you, O oh Lord, are faithful and just to not only forgive us of our sins, but to cleanse us of all unrighteousness. Your word declares in Micah 7 and 19 that you will now take those sins and evils and now toss them into the sea of forgetfulness, meaning that you will this will never come before you again. We thank you that you are a faithful God. We thank you that you are a just God. We thank you that you are a God of restoration, a God of hope. You are not a God of condemnation. You are not a God who will kick people when they're already down. So we yes, thank Lord. you for your mercy. You told Moses you will have mercy on whom you choose to have yes. mercy upon. So this day, this night, Lord, we believe that yes. we are the candidates for mercy because the mere fact that we are still alive and your word declares that wherever there is life, mm. there is hope. There is hope for change. There is hope that the situation could turn around. There is hope for restoration. There is yes. hope. And it is that hope that we hold on to the night, Lord. So therefore, Father God, we seal our prayer according to your word that whatsoever things we desire when we pray yes, we must believe yes. that we have received it and we shall have it in the matchless and in the mighty name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. 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 Thank you so much, Pastor Kevin, you for your prayer and your time. Can you tell the people where they can follow you and find you? And I think yeah. you got a book coming out. <laughs> yes, I got a book coming out, boy. Listen, that has been some serious pressure. That book hopefully should be out. Hopefully by the end of this month, we have to make some major, major, major changes. Uh, and uh, they are in the final stages of that. So hopefully it should be out. It's called uh, Prayers That Work. Uh, uh, you can visit my website. In fact, there's a website specifically for that book, kevinlauing.com. You could sign up, put your name, email address, and everything to be updated with the information. And of course, for those who don't know, I'm on uh, YouTube, Facebook, Twitter. And I also have uh, my Android and iPhone apps. You can download it on your tablets as well as uh, your phones for having yes. easy access to get all of this powerful information. I have over 500 uh, videos on my YouTube and my yes. blog site. I have over 600 articles, spiritual warfare, false prophets, witchcraft, you name it. So there's yeah. some card grip information. It's all free. There's no charge for anything because I know this like to come into this information. It is the same information that has freed me. God didn't charge me for it. So I most definitely can't charge you for it. Come on now. Amen. Amen, y'all. He have a plethora of information. All of this teaching that you got tonight, he have videos on this. So mm -hmm. go to his YouTube and you can pull up all the videos about single, married, divorce, everything. Again, he just did a whole teaching on married, divorce, and remarried for the past few weeks. So go ahead to his channel and just take in that word. Um, and again, click, like, share um, this message tonight with your friends and family. Um, let them know, you know, let them hear this word. I think this is profound. This is amazing. And this is going to break change and um, save lives. So thank you all for coming. Good night. Have a wonderful night and see you again next week on Kingdom Language Utterance. Good night.